What's up guys, I'm Rhett. Welcome back to Lawn Insider. Today we're gonna to revisit the Lawn Insider Bermuda maintenance calendar, and I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I'm gonna be doing in my lawn here in late summer in Central Texas. But before we jump into the video, I wanted to remind y'all that all throughout the month of August, you can use the promo code OLYMPICS, all caps, and get free shipping on any Lawn Insider merch. So check out the link below and get yourself a cool t-shirt. What's up y'all, welcome back. It's August 21st, late summer. Obviously we're headed into fall and I've got some big decisions to make in my lawn. And what are those big decisions? Well, let me show you. Okay, so over here in the lawn, you can start to see that when I mow, I'm actually starting to scalp in a few areas across the lawn. And the reason for that is the grass itself is getting really, really thick. And the reason that's a problem is because when my lawn gets too thick, my mower starts to skate over the grass, and when it does gain traction, sometimes it leaves scalp marks like you saw back there, and they just don't look very good in the lawn. So basically, I have two choices. I'm going to have to take the lawn back down again by scalping, or I'm just going to have to raise my height of cut for the rest of the season into the fall. So given my two options, raising the height of cut is actually the easier one, at least right now, because all it requires me to do is raising my mower and continue on my normal mowing schedule. Now, it might cause me some headaches in the spring when I do my hard scalp because there's just going to be a lot more grass to deal with, but that's something you have to take into account when you're making these decisions. If I decide to scalp down right now, Timing is a lot more crucial because we're headed into fall, the days are going to start getting shorter, the temperatures are going to start dropping, and the Bermuda is going to have a harder time repairing itself. So if I do decide to scalp down, it's really important that I get that done in the next few weeks. If you were in my position, would you go ahead and do a reset scalp on the lawn, or would you just raise the height of cut and keep it at like three-fourths of an inch the rest of the year? Let me know in the comments section below. I think I've pretty much already made up my mind on which decision I'm going to go with, so make sure you hit that red subscribe button below so you can tune in next week and see what choice I made. So right now we're nearing the end of August, and as far as our cultural practices go, the mowing, fertilizing, watering, not really a whole lot is going to change for your lawn at this time in Central Texas because we're still getting a lot of heat. And remember, Bermuda grass is a warm season turf, so it's growing really well this time of year because we're really getting those hot temperatures. But we haven't been getting as much rain here lately. It's probably been dry for the last two or three weeks. So you may want to consider supplementing your watering program with a moisture management product. Because if your lawn is anything like mine, you've probably started to develop two or three dry spots here and there. So I'm not sure how great you are going to be able to see this on film. But this area right here that's right along the sidewalk has really dried out lately. Because I have actually didn't water this week because we were supposed to get rain and we didn't. So this... Um, lawn hasn't gotten water for probably about 14 days so I've gotten a dry spot right here by the sidewalk and the reason that this spot dries out faster than the rest of the lawn is because of that heat that comes off the sidewalk. So as far as which moisture management product to use there's a lot to choose from but I personally use Hydrotain and you basically just use it like a hose-in sprayer you screw the hose in on this side and you spray it straight from this bottle right here and it treats 2,500 to 5,000 square feet according to the bottle, but I think I would just use it to spot spray the certain dry areas. So for me, this bottle would actually last a pretty long time. If you wanted to though, you could use it on your entire lawn, especially if you have a big problem with your lawn drying up in between waterings. If you're interested in a product like this, I will leave a link to it in the description box below. Okay, so back to the calendar, just looking at the time frame we're in, which is late summer, early fall, you can see that top dressing, especially in our area, which it's still hot down here, so you could still consider top dressing for maybe the next couple of weeks. I don't think I would top dress past maybe like the first week of September, and I definitely would not try to do a super, super heavy coat, because you want to give your grass a chance to grow through that sand while the grass is still actively growing. So if you want to top dress, if you're thinking about leveling out your lawn a little bit, you might want to consider doing that here in the next couple of weeks. As far as your liquid and granular fertilizer applications, I would just continue those business as usual unless your yard is showing considerable signs of stress and then you might want to consider switching it up from a higher nitrogen content fertilizer to a stress blend. A stress blend is just going to contain less nitrogen and there's going to be more potassium. So if you're interested in something like that, I'll leave a link to that in the description box below as well. 
You're also going to want to continue on your normal insecticide program. I actually made a video a couple weeks ago on how to treat armyworms and sod webworms. If that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link to it in the card up here. The next thing that you'll see on the calendar is the humic acid applications and you can actually make those all throughout the entire year so no problem there you can just continue those. As far as the watering schedule goes I would still recommend to aim for one inch of water a week whether that comes from rain or your sprinkler system. Now if you're noticing just a lot of heat stress and you just have a lot of dry spots in the yard you might want to consider bumping that up to an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter but that all just depends on the needs of each individual yard. The last thing explicitly mentioned on the calendar for this time frame is the plant growth regulator and if you're already making those PGR applications I would just suggest that you continue to make those at least into September probably towards the end of September because remember as long as it stays hot outside the grass is going to continue to grow really quickly and that PGR is just going to give you more time in between mows. So if you're already using it I would just say at least keep on using it probably until end of September. And the last thing that I wanted to mention, and this is actually listed on the calendar for earlier in the spring, is core aeration. So right now you have a probably a three or four week window where it'd be okay to core aerate, but you don't want to do it too much later in the season when the temperatures cool down. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. If you enjoy the video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're liking the content and you want to continue to see more of it, hit the red subscribe button below. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the comments section below. I'll see you all again next week on Insider Out.